Hey viewers, we are back with another interview. We are joined by John from the South Nation Conserv Conservation Authority to talk about the waterway that runs through our village. Can you tell us the name of the river and how much of it runs through Metcalf? Sure, of course. Metcalf is located around what is commonly known as the Castor River. However, the portion of the river found within Metcalf is actually called the Middle Castor River. There's also a small stream or drain that flows north-south through Metcalf, known as Cassidy Creek, which flows directly into the Middle Castor River just south of town. The Castor River system was also originally named for the many beavers found within its watershed. The word castor means beaver in French. The Castor River watershed, which is made of several rivers, has a drainage basin or area of about 739 square kilometers, and the main stem of the river flows for about 60 kilometers. Where does it originate and where does it flow to? So the Middle Castor River is actually one of the three main rivers that flow together to meet near Embrun, where several rivers and streams form together to create the Castor River. There's a North Castor River that has streams that begin further north in Leitrim and Greeley, and they join together with Castor's or Medcalf's Middle Castor River near Russell, along with the South Castor River that begins much further south near Hallville. These three rivers flow together in Russell to form the, the Castor River, which continues to flow east towards Embrun, where the river is again joined by two more watercourses, being the East Castor River and York Creek. The Castor River then continues to flow east until it empties itself into the South Nation River near Castleman, which means that Medcalf's Middle Castor River forms one of the main tributaries to the South Nation River. And people often ask where rivers come from. All rivers have starting points where water begins to flow, and we call the source of the rivers headwaters. The headwaters can come from rainfall or snowmelt, but can also bubble up from groundwater or form at the edge of a lake or even a large pond. The other end of the river is called its mouth, where the river empties into a larger body of water, such as another river or a lake or finally an ocean. Along the way, rivers can pass through different areas and ecosystems, including wetlands, where plants can slow down the water and filter out pollutants. The water that flows in our rivers is considered fresh, meaning that it contains less than 1% salt. However, rivers still carry and distribute important salts and nutrients that support plant and animal life. And for this reason, some of the most biodiverse habitats on our planet can be found around rivers. Can you tell us about the plants and animals that might live in this ecosystem? For sure, and some of the best places for plants and animals to live is near and along rivers. We call the area around watercourses a riparian area or a riverine zone. In technical terms, this is often the 15 to 30 meters around each side of a river. At South Nation Conservation, we work with people to try and limit the amount of building and development that goes along rivers to ensure that our watercourses are kept clean and healthy, but also to make sure that people are kept out of floodplains that surround rivers and to keep construction away from these steep slopes and shorelines that can easily erode. Uh, within the area around our rivers and within floodplains, we often find birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects, fish, mollusks, mammals, and many types of plants. And thinking about birds, you can often find the big blue heron nestling along our rivers. For reptiles, we have many different species of snakes along with different turtle species. In Ontario, all eight of the different turtles uh, are, at, are species at risk due to their declining habitat and road mortality from being hit by vehicles. Spotting a, a turtle, like a painted turtle or a snapping turtle is always a welcome sight, but make sure not to disturb their habitat and to watch out for them while driving. In terms of insects, there's lots of different species of mayfly and dragonfly that spend most of their life on the river. And for fish, there's so many. Fish need to lay their eggs in smaller streams, creeks, and ditches where they hatch and flow back to larger systems to spawn. Throughout the entire South Nation River system, there are over 72 different species of fish that call our watershed home. And several sport fish like walleye, pike, smallmouth, and largemouth bass, and yellow perch. When we were investigating the health of the Castor River watershed back in 20, 2010, we actually caught about 2,500 different fish at our monitoring locations that belong to 29 different fish species. Um, we even caught some brown trout, which is a popular game fish from the salmon family. There's also a dam in Russell that we maintain to control water levels along the Castor River. 
Some species of fish pass over control structures either on their own or through man-made fish ladders. And the American eel is also located within our river system. However, it must travel much further uh, through the Atlantic Ocean to reach their salty spawning destination. And then lastly, in terms of mammals, the Castle River watershed is a great place to spot moose, beavers, muskrats, and even river otters, which are a personal favorite for most. Very interesting. Can you offer advice for local residents on keeping the river healthy? Of course, we all have a role to play in maintaining the health of our rivers. Our actions, even small, can sometimes have big consequences. So it's always important to be mindful of the impacts that our actions can have. Environmental sustainability practices at home can help reduce our carbon footprint and responsibly using our clean water can go a long way to improving our environment. Managing pollution is something that we all need to take part in. Make sure to pick up litter and also make sure not to leave anything behind or dispose of anything near our rivers. Try and leave no trace when visiting our waterways. Also, protecting our water sources doesn't start at the riverbed. It needs to start at home. Make sure not to pour harmful chemicals down the drain as they can lead back into our rivers. And more importantly, make sure not to let trash, detergents, oil, or any chemicals wash onto your lawn or roadways. There are storm drains located in our communities and everything that flows into those drains flows directly into your closest river or stream. A cigarette butt, a piece of trash, soap that was used to wash your car, it all flows directly down drains, does not get treated, and flows right into our rivers. So please remember, only rain down the drain. What safety tips would you share for playing around the river? Rivers are great places to step outdoors and into nature. And like we said today, there are areas that are full of life to experience. However, please be mindful of steep and slippery slopes or changing water levels, especially during the spring. Always tell someone where you're going, bring a buddy, and when on water, wear a life jacket. Also, please keep your distances from water control structures like dams. It is illegal to be within or to fish within 30 meters of a control structure. Water levels and flows are much higher here and can change in an instant. Also consider visiting a conservation area or local park that offers maintained trails and amenities that can bring you close to rivers and streams without disturbing the plants and wildlife that call these areas home. Take only pictures and leave only footsteps. Wow. Is there anything else about the SNC that you would like to share with us today? Sure. Well, we're a watershed and community-based organization called a Conservation Authority. And we have jurisdiction around the South Nation River watershed in Eastern Ontario. We work directly for 16 different member municipalities, including the city of Ottawa, who work together to sustainably manage natural resources like our forests and rivers in our areas. Much of our volunteer and community and habitat restoration work is funded by donors and partners that we rely on and volunteers to help care for and steward their local environment. To learn more, visit nation.on.ca. Thank you. And our final question for all of our guests is, how would you finish this sentence? My Metcalf is? My Metcalf is happy, healthy, and biodiverse. A community where people and the environment can live, work, and play together. It's our environment, and we're in it together. Thank you to John for joining us uh, to talk about our local waterways. Thank you to our viewers for tuning in. See you around town.